welcome to Superintendent's Corner. I'm Dr. David Glendinning. Today on the show we have three guests. We have Mrs. Casting, Ruth, a junior at our high school, and Mrs. Martin. All talking about Cub Care and how it fits into our school program and how it really strives to bring individual student growth and trust alive from our guiding principles. So welcome to the studio. Great, thanks. Ruth, we're going to start with you. Okay. So what do you do at Cub Care? Um, so basically, we have like kindergarten through uh, fourth grade, and then I usually have the third and fourth graders, so I'm kind of like their little leader, and I have them almost four days a week, and we just go around, we have activities and rotations that we do with them, I help them with homework and stuff like that. Yep. Uh, Mrs. Casting, so when you guys start thinking about how to plug kids in, uh, what, what made you kind of come up to a high school to, to grab a group of kids, and, and kind of the inception of, of that? So we were seeing a staff shortage, we had a need for staff, and we had some high school students that were already working for the Cub Care program, but unfortunately the high school gets out after the elementary and the intermediate school, and so we had a gap of time when we um, didn't have that staff filled, and so we came to Mr. Martin and Mr. A House here at the high school, and they um, worked some magic and created a course, a work-based learning course, so the students get to leave school early, every day and they report to, they also have like online coursework and classwork and it met our need for staffing that, that's great uh, mrs martin so how many kids are involved uh total both at the high school level and in cup care yes yeah, so um currently we have 700 students enrolled at cup care um, and right now we have four students that are enrolled in what we call our ice program and then starting next semester we will add uh, we know for sure two more with the possibly Third, and we have started enrollment, the application process for the 2019-20 school year. So ultimately our goal would be to have 15 to 20 high school students. Um, so we'll see what, what happens. Ruth, are you thinking about like early childhood development as a post-secondary career? And what yes. are your plans as you get ready to think about graduating next year? Um, yes, one thing that I definitely want to do, I want to be an elementary school teacher okay. for sure. Um, this program is what really made me know that I wanted to do that because I was always nervous to work with kids, but being able to work with them made me realize how much I love kids, so I'm like really excited to go to college and become a teacher and do that. Yeah. Are you thinking about Purdue? No, I'm thinking more like Ball State, <laughs> I <Iowa. laughs> Okay. They're all great universities. Now, Mrs. Casting is a huge Purdue fan. <laughs> <laughs> so when we think about this, do the kids get paid? Uh, they only get they get credit. It's an all year program. Talk a little bit about the, the the inner workings of the actual program from the kids side. So, so like I said, the kids get to leave school early every day. So they leave about one thirty every okay. day. Um, and then on Thursdays this semester is when they meet with Mrs. Weedman, um, who helps with Franklin Academy, and she is also the teacher um, for this course. And so they talk through things that they've done that week, challenges that they may have seen, and um, talk about what's going on in the different buildings, because um, they're all placed in the different elementary schools. They do get paid $8 an hour um, for all of their time that they're worked, and they work until about 5.30 or 6 every evening, um, and they get course credit um, for towards their diploma for this course. Is it one semester only, or they can do both semesters? Either, or, um, and so the credits also are adjustable, so depending on the hours worked, um, they can either earn one to three credits, and it can be a semester program, or it can be a year-long program, depending on the student and their needs. So we're pretty flexible. Um, we feel like there's a lot of great um, wins for both yeah. sides, so we, we just try to make it successful. So Ruth, are you doing the 20 hour, you work 20 hours in the program? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so far I'm, I believe that I do have two cousins coming this semester. All so, right. And then I am joining again for next semester as well. So. Wow, that's, that, that's the other part. Are all of them coming back? Do you see the, the four that have said yes, they're going to come back again for next semester? Except for one who's graduating okay. midterm, but she is actually uh, now going to be employed as a regular cup care worker. So she's going to stay on with us even though she's graduating high school. So we're really excited about that. What a, what a great community partnership and having so many kids and then helping our high school kids. Uh, that's what it's really all about. So what, what's one or two takeaways? What have you learned so far? You know, I know you want to be a teacher and you learned that, but what else did you learn uh, working with the kids? Um, you have to have patience. <laughs> sure. they, they love to test your nerves and see how far they can get with you. And you have to learn to like 
be patient with them and not give in to them. Because I, I, I struggled with that in the beginning of the year. I was like, oh, these kids are crazy. But once you, you start to learn their personalities, and you're like, I know what this one does, I know what this one does, I know how to like accommodate for all of them. And I also learned that you have to be a good listener because the kids love to come to you with things. And I've, I've listened to a bunch of crazy stories and advice and given advice to them and stuff like that. Mrs. Casting, what's the type of student you're looking for to come into this program? We are looking for someone that's very dependable, that um, is looking for something post-secondary related to kids, whether we have people that are looking to be pediatric surgeons or teachers or go into psychology and learn a little bit more um, about kids, um, and somebody that is eager to work and show up to work, excited and ready to, like she said, listen and just play with the kids every day. Mrs. Martin, is there an application process so if a kid wants to, to, to think about that might be something I want to do, how do they get involved in the program? So starting in January, um, every high school student will meet with their counselor and talk about their schedule for next year. So they actually have all the application uh, materials that, you, that they would need uh, that I would encourage them if they have questions prior. Um, they can either go down to their counselor or feel free to reach out to Kelsey or myself okay. and we could answer their questions. So. What's well, a creative way to solve a problem not having enough staff and hands to help the kids? Uh, our program has gone crazy as far as the number of students. We started uh, you know, four years ago and we had just a few kids in that time and now we're at 700 enrollees um, and uh, looking to continue to, to provide a great service so thank you for doing that. So as you heard a little bit about the program, hope you've got some ideas and you want to be a part of it if you're a student contact Mrs. Kelsey, Mrs. Martin, or your school counselor. Um, and you heard from Ruth the things that you get to learn and you get paid. You know, uh, 20 hours and when you're doing a job you love, it's a, it's a pretty good thing. So hopefully you've enjoyed learning more about Cub Care and the program that we have for our high school students. If you have questions, reach one of the, the adult leaders and the directors and uh, we we'll look forward to, to having you be a part of that. Thank you for watching Superintendent's Corner.